Hi everyone, my name is Della Foles. I'm an artist as well as I'm known as the Bicycle Lady. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I hope you're doing great too. If you find this video helpful and entertaining, give it a thumbs up. Also, if you have any comments, please uh, leave them in the comment section and I'll promptly respond. Now, last time, went through making the viewfinder, which is here. And as I said, I went back and put on the paint pin lines because they are a bit more durable. They can still scratch off, but they are a bit more durable than the Sharpie. So let's get started with the exercise. And best thing to do is basically to lay the viewfinder down and just mark out where all the lines go. And I'm going to be using the thirds. So I'm going to make a note there. And then uh, you don't even need to rule it. You can just use your viewfinder as a straight edge and mark the lines on your piece of paper. Now I'm going to mark these probably a little heavier than I would normally. I'm using the uh, softer uh, drafting pencil I, I like to use, which is the Musgrave 600 News. Um, M&E would be very close to it. I see that the News has a little bit less shine than the Ebony. I enjoy sketching with it. And it is US made in Tennessee. So that's just an added plus for me because I'm in the US. Okay, now I got the sheet of what I'm going to draw on. Once you're better at doing the perspective and helping to see foreshortening, you could hold it over. Now granted you'd want to look straight down. It's a little hard for me without getting my head into the camera. But look straight down and then you could see where the cross lines, like you put it on a cross line like this. And then since you know where the line is, you can start and do the shapes that way. That can be a little bit difficult in the beginning especially. Plus you can shake around and move this around. And when this moves, then everything gets thrown off, as we discussed in the last video briefly. What I'm going to do right now, I'm going to take this soda can. I'm going to turn them upside down. And I am going to put this on. And then I'm going to take the subject. Now, I'm still going to go through and do what Betty... Betty uh, Edwards exercises where you change up the hand and you balance it on the hand and then you take a visual liner or one of the wet media and you draw the edges to help you and then you can transfer this over to this paper. That's going to be more complicating time consuming and I really don't want this video to be extremely extremely long. So what I'm going to do instead, I thought I'd use a piece of fruit. And essentially, I, in order to keep my head out of the camera and blocking everything, I am basically looking at it from the side. I think you may be seeing some of it there. Uh, and you can squint or use one eye to draw this. Right now, just putting much of the and I'll do some of that, and then this here, basically, and and so on. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit more refined where I can look directly from above and then I'll come back. But that's the idea. You can do the bezel line and get the outline. And then once you get the outline, you can put this down on a white piece of paper and look at where it falls in the squares and then trace it that way. But first, let me get a better uh, angle where I can um, do that a little bit better and get a little better drawing there. I'll be right back. I took a minute, as I said I was going to do, and I transferred this image onto a paper on which I gridded it out into thirds, as I said. Now, the other thing you're going to notice here is that I did use a paint pen, I don't know if I pointed this out before, and did put in the different color lines with the paint pen. It is a bit more durable. It still can rub uh, scratch off and so I use the pins on the opposite side I'm doing that now the great thing with this like I said it's a perspective type tool whereas if you're looking at Apple straight on as if my head was here you can end up with a conflict because you know the Apple looks like this and has this type of length so your mind wants to draw it that way However, it is what's called foreshortened, and that's how come you're getting a similar. Now, if it was straight up and down, I wouldn't have as much here. It'd be even more, I guess you would say squash down. Still, it gives you the perspective, and that's how this type of viewfinder is not only the way of seeing something in the layout, but can also can help you resolve and look at the shape from how long is this line? Exactly what position without your mind saying, hey, this is an apple. Uh, this is the length it should be. Okay. Now, this will not give you a finished drawing or finished uh, even a line drawing or even if you shade it in. So I did take it a little bit further and it's the same thing. I did a little bit of adjustment, as you can tell here, but I, I just took my pencil and basically shaded it in because it was a dark. Probably could use a little more refinement here, but not bad. And that's what this is meant to do. It's not to give you a finished line drawing, it gives you a starting point and some guide lines or maybe guide spacing. Now, I wasn't going to do this, but what the heck. Let's do another one. I won't take it to the paper, but let's do it on the viewfinder we made, that we made together here in this video. So, the first thing I want to do is, I have it marked so I know which way is up. Let's clean this off. A little bit of water. Uh, Water. Clean this off real well. Okay. Now, uh, I've been using the green Vision Line. Uh, Vision Line, excuse me, Visibiz by Expo. It's a little thicker point than some of the others. There's the purple. And of course, uh, the Statler or Stadler. Uh, non-permanent markers for wet media works great on there as well. I think I want to stay with this one. Go ahead and stay with that. Alright, well, let me get to my little... Now, if my egg gets in the way, please excuse me. But I'm going to have to pretty much look straight down on it. Or... It's slightly off to the side, well, it will change the way it's going to look instead of straight up and down. But, yeah, I think we can do this here. Uh, well, let's move it down just a little bit more. And if 
if you end up with video of my head. Now you can squint or you can close. If you close one eye, it's going to change exactly where you're going to see everything. And you can take your time. I'm going to do this a little bit accelerated. Highlight there. And then here's there's here. And then here's the shadow area. Well, that's a quick and rough. Yeah. All right. And let's double check it. I'm going to turn this over. And let's see what it looks like. Not bad. So. From this, I can dress it up, give it a little more, bit more line, uh, observe it, maybe not with the viewfinder as secondary, but it gives me, like I said, guide points and helps me get past my mind stopping me from looking at it strictly a shape, distance, and seeing the edges. So that's it for this using the tool and also the beginning of this current grouping of exercises. Now I know people say I go real slow on it. Well that's true. Now I may not be doing 200 of each exercises or steps that I've been documenting here as a way to learn to improve to draw in my case or even learn how to draw. But I am doing it to the point of exhaustion. I'm exhausting that subject for me. I'm learning a lot from it and it's helping me. I've already noticed it. it's definitely a help for me. If you're following along and doing this, let me know. A comment. I'll be glad to respond promptly to all comment. I will continue on with various fruit including, you know, the typical banana along with the, this artificial pear apple and maybe a real apple or so and, and I'll be turning them various ways and so forth and using the viewfinder to help me see and make sure my mind is not taking over to see the okay what distance is it um, and everything so if it's foreshortened my mind won't take over and try to change it as well as I'm going to be doing the exercises that Betty Edwards, in her book, Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain workbook, has where you have the viewfinder supported on your hand and you take different positions. And you'll see the foreshortening as well. And outline that and transfer that over to a piece of paper. I think it, so. so, that's it for this current group of exercises. Uh, let me know how you get along, and until next time, bye!